Hello, everybody. Um, today, inshallah, uh, we will do uh, several past paper questions about uncertainty uh, in paper uh, three for uh, IV or uh, DP uh, physics. Uh, first of all, here there is a question an investigation to measure uh, acceleration of free fall or the suspended horizontally by two vertical strings of equal strength. The string are distance d apart. Uh, now the we are given the figure like this. If you see uh, when the rod is displaced, small angle and then released, simple harmonic oscillation take place in an horizontal plane. The theoretical production uh, of oscillation t given as the following, uh, where c is known uh, is known a numerical constant, state the unit of c. In order to find the unit of C, I have to make C subject of the formula. This is the easiest way. So C equals uh, T D square root of G. I think the easiest way to take square root for both sides. T square, D square, G. Now substitute the units. The units for C square is T square second square, D square meter square, G meters per second square now we can simplify this c square equals uh, this cancel this right and we have only what meter to the power three so if you take square root for both sides this becomes three over two Okay, now a student records the time for 20 oscillation. Explain why this produce uh, leads to more precision measurement of time uh, for one oscillation. Uh, <clears throat> in order to measure um, uh, the time, either for a single oscillation or for a 20 oscillations, uh, the uncertainty will be the smallest division uh, of the stopwatch, right? So for single reading, the absolute uncertainty is, let's say, 0 0.01 seconds. For several oscillations, which will last longer time, the absolute uncertainty is the same so the percentage uncertainty will be lower so guys again uh, for single oscillation, absolute uncertainty is 0 0.1. For several oscillations, right, which last longer time, right, which last longer time, Uh, the absolute uncertainty is 0 0.1. This is, uh, if you remember, this is, could be the smallest division of the two, which is the stopwatch. So we use the same, uh, the same tool. 
to measure uh, small uh, time uh, or uh, shorter time, sorry, and longer time. So if you find, if you'd like to find the percentage uncertainty, you have to know if you remember percentage uncertainty equals what the absolute over what over the measured value times hundred percent. So if the absolute is the same but the measured value is longer, uh, is longer or has a uh, is longer, yes. So the percentage uncertainty will be lower. This is one of the uh, one of the most important benefit of uh, uh, measuring the time for several uh, oscillations. Beside that, <coughs> um, you know that you know uh, uh, one of the possible sources for uncertainty is the random error, and the random error can be reduced if if I uh, repeat the experiment and taking the average. So uh, 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 repeating and taking average of the experiment will reduce the random. Finding the mean reduces the random uncertainty. These are the two points that we have to consider. This is the first mark. This is the second mark. Okay. Now, part C. In uh, in one experiment, D was varied. The graph varied. The graph shows um, the plotted value T against one over D. Error bars are negligibly small. We draw the best fit uh, for these uh, data. Now, to draw a best fit. Uh, as you, uh, if you remember best fit uh, we have several conditions for best fit first of all if there is an uh, if there are sorry an error bars the best fit must pass through all error bars secondly uh, the line of best fit must make an even distribution of the points around the line uh, same points upper the line as lower the line okay so in this way we may draw best fit could not be exactly right as in the paper because using this ruler is not accurate i can't rotate it accurately And also it might be thick. Uh, you can observe that this is lower and this is where upper other points are lying on the line. Uh, suggest whether the data are consist with the theoretical production. Uh, theoretical production, guys, or oh, this type of questions is related to the normalization. Theoretical production that uh, predicts or theoretical uh, theory predicts that uh, T equals, I think, um, C over D, C over square root of g I may rearrange it 1 over d I rearrange this equation like this look the scale of y axis is the scale of the time the scale of the x axis is the scale of 1 over d look this is the scale of the y-axis. This is the scale of what? Of the x-axis. Does, does this line uh, shows a um, straight line that passing, or the, sorry, does this graph uh, show a straight line that passing through the origin? 
there is no uh, yes there is no y intercept this part is the gradient right so there is no y intercept here uh, the graph is straight line that passes through the origin which is agree which agrees with the theory Uh, also, um, C, right, C over square root of G is constant, which is uh, the gradient, right, as what we mentioned before. So, definitely, uh, because of these two reasons, right, uh, the graph is straight line that uh, passes um, uh, through the origin. Uh, also, uh, C over uh, square root of G is constant, which represents the gradient. So, as a result of these two reasons, uh, the prediction, the, the, the theory matches uh, the experimental results. Now, the numerical value of constant C is SI unit is 1.67. Determine G using the graph. Now, in order to determine G, I have to use the concept that the gradient equivalent to C square root of G equals to C over square root square root of G. Sorry. So I have to find the gradient. One of the mo one of the common mistakes of finding the gradient, guys, that the student may take two points in this position. Actually, this is wrong because I have to take two points that the separation between these two points more than half of the line, right? More than half of the best fit in order to include all uh, the data. So I may select point here. I may select point here. Okay. Uh, then I may find uh, the gradient. Okay, now uh, I selected two points here. I think this is 4.5. This point is As I told you before, it may not be accurate here. I selected this point. Um, two, two point one, two point two, two point three, two point four. Make sure, guys, to check the units. the The safest way is. Uh, to have SI units, make sure about that. It's an important point. Make sure to use the SI units or to convert uh, any scale that is not written in the SI unit to the SI units. Uh, here, I think uh, one, this point is um, one uh, point. Um, Six. Okay, so now I have two points. Gradient equals uh, two point four minus zero point six over uh, four point five minus one. 
using the calculator. Okay, now uh, to find the uh, uh, G, which is the gra uh, gravitational field strength, I may, re I may rearrange this equation uh, to have it like this. So it's C squared over G squared. If I divide 1.67 over uh, 0.514, I will get 10. Point, I think 10.5. 10.6 right meters per second square which is in the uh, range of the uh, answer uh, which is in the range uh, of the answer in the mark scheme okay okay guys now second question um, a magnetized needle is oscillating with the string about vertical axis horizontal uh, magnetic field B uh, the time for 10 oscillation is recorded uh, sorry is recorded for different values of e. we are given a graph like this first question one mark to a graph the line the best fit for the data um, one of the common mistakes guys that uh, when we are asked about uh, the, gra the best fit or uh, the line of best fit some students may think that this line must be a straight line no it depends on uh, uh, the shape of the graph here it's very obvious that the shape of the graph is what curved so for curved part what we have to consider on or what we have to focus on uh, for um, to draw a graph, the graph must be smooth, not inked, passing through all the error bars, right? Passing through all the error bars. I may magnify this in order to show you how to draw. You have to draw it as one line. Okay. Uh, don't connect the, uh, the points together, only one line. Uh, I would use one or thin, not thick. What I did is wrong because it does not pass through uh, this error bar, right? So I have to repeat. It's a little bit difficult on uh, the screen. But on the paper, it could be easier. This is wrong too. Here, guys, there's some of angst. Something like this. This is, could be a best fit. Okay, it passes through all the points and so on. Now, uh, write down a uh, time taken for one oscillation when B is equivalent to 0.05T uh, with absolute uncertainty. So I have to get the absolute uncertainty from the graph. 0.05, this is 0.05. This is the time, don't forget, this is the time for 10 oscillations, right? For 10. Oscillations. So the actual time is 8.4 for 10 oscillation plus minus. I will get the um, from the absolute uncertainty from the graph. I erase this in order to find the absolute uncertainty. Absolute uncertainty is is this. This is the absolute what? Uncertainty from the point to one end of the error bars. Oh, end of error bar, sorry. So this about um, 
uh, one. This is a box and half, right? So it would be three or uh, zero point three, right? Plus minus zero point three. This is for ten oscillations. Again, guys, why it's zero point three? Because this is box and half, right? Uh, each box, each box is equivalent um, to zero point two, right? Vertically, vertical length or vertical side. So it will be a zero point. Now I have to divide both by ten, if you remember. So this becomes point eight four plus minus 0 0.03 notice something here guys this is um, two decimal places always uh, when we present uh, the measured value with its uncertainty the uncertainty must have the same number of decimal places as the measured value and regularly as a one significant figure so this is one significant figure two decimal places this is two decimal places which is right uh, a student formed hypothesis that the period of one oscillation p is given by where k is a constant determine the value of k using the point for which p sorry which b uh, equals 0 0.005 t state the uncertainty in k to an appropriate number of significant figures so accordingly, I have to use now uh, the graph or the time, uh, the graph to mine, sorry, I'm sorry, the graph in order to find what uh, k with its uncertainty. Now to find k, uh, The fractional uncertainty in K is equivalent to fractional uncertainty in P plus fractional uncertainty in B multiplied by half. Why it's multiplied by half? Because the power here for P, the power is one half. And beside that, I have to take absolute value. If you remember, even if it's negative, no matter, since I would take the absolute value. Okay. Uh, now, if you look to the graph here, look to the uh, x axis scale. Here, the uh, uncertainty along the x axis um, uh, is it small or ignored? Might be ignored. So this is why the examiner uh, doesn't uh, did not include this uh, uncertainty. So here there is no uncertainty for B, right? No uncertainty is given or mentioned uh, for B. So now the uncertainty in K is equivalent, fractional uncertainty in K is equivalent to fractional uncertainty uh, in P. Don't forget that P is the period of one oscillation that we found in part two B. So uh, I have to find K also. K, it's easy. K equal P times the square root of B. P is uh, 8.4, sorry, 0 0.84. At this moment, B was 0 0.005. It's 0.5. This is the constant B. If I want to write the unit, guys, it could be uh, accredited now. The unit is S here. This is Tesla, right? To the power half, okay? Tesla to the power half. So I may write it Tesla 
t to the power half. Now substitute in this formula in order to find delta k over 0 0.059 is equivalent to 0 0.03 over 0.84 if you do the calculation delta k the absolute uncertainty in k remember delta k is the absolute uncertainty in k it's 0 0.002 i took it as one significant figure right as what we mentioned before so eventually k equivalent measured value 0 0.059 plus minus 0.002 let's consider this again this is one decimal one sorry significant figures three decimal places and here also three decimal places now we are asked about unit of k we found it already okay uh, k K is equivalent to P square root of B. This is second, right? If unit for K. Uh, B is Tesla to the power half. Here we are, we are not asked about SI unit, right? We are asked about unit of K. Also, this question is about the normalization. The student plots a graph to show how p squared varies with 1 over b for the data. Sketch the, the shape of expected line of the best fit on the axis below, assuming that the relation uh, p equals k over square root of b is verified. You don't have to put number on the axes. Okay, guys, I have to rearrange this equation. P equals K over, I may write it like this, P squared equals K 1 over B. Now, P squared is used, uh, uh, the axis of Y axis, 1 over B, the scale of the uh, X axis. So, where K is constant, which is M, so the line must be straight passing through the origin. Okay, guys, again, P squared along Y axis, one over B along X axis, so where k is constant so the equation satisfies the equation of straight lines a straight line so i can draw it like this passing through the origin because there is no y intercept okay uh, state how the value of k can be obtained from the graph easily we mentioned that before uh, k is equivalent to what to the gradient if we compare the equation of p square equals k1 over b uh, sorry uh, this is k squared sorry um this is k squared so uh, uh here k squared equals the gradient this is along y this is along x so the gradient is k squared so k equals square root of gradient now this is a question about the combined uncertainty in a simple pendulum experiment student measures the period t of pendulum many times and obtains an average value t uh, which is equivalent to uh, 2.540 plus minus 0 0.005 this is the absolute uncertainty and L1.60 plus minus 0.01. Calculate using G the value of acceleration free fall, including the uncertainty state, the value of uncertainty to one significant figure. As what we mentioned before, guys, uh, 
delta G, the absolute uncertainty or the fractional uncertainty of G is equivalent. 4 pi, it's a constant, so it's not measured, which is delta L over L plus delta T over T multiplied by 2. Why it's multiplied by 2? Again, because I have to multiply the fractional uncertainty by the power of the quantity. 4 pi, as what, as what I mentioned before, uh, it's um, our 4 pi squared is a constant, so it's not measured, so it does not have uh, uncertainty. Uh, so, uh, in order to find delta G, I have to find G first of all. So, G equals 4 pi squared L. Here we have, I have to consider the number of significant figures. Don't forget. L is 1.60. Three significant figures. Over T squared, which is 2.5. 2 2.540 squared this is three significant figures this is what four significant figures so the answer of g must be three significant figures okay using a calculator guys i got this value uh, so i have to write it into to the appropriate number of significant figures three significant figures uh, one more is accepted now let's substitute in the uh, combined uncertainty delta G over 9.7907. I will consider it as it is now. Then uh, after that, the final answer will be rounded to the appropriate number of significant figures. Look, I did not round it here. Okay, I used it as it is. Uh, delta L um, 0 0.01 over 1.60. Plus two times um, zero point zero zero five over uh, two point five forty. Okay. Uh, after doing the calculation of that, I got delta G equals zero point zero nine nine seven. So the final representation must be G equals. Uh, I will write it now as it is, then I will uh, show you how to uh, simplify it. G equals 9.7907 plus minus 0 0.0997. Okay. Now, guys, in order to write this to one significant figures, as what we are asking the question, this must be what? 0 0.1 right so here we have what one decimal place so I am forced now to use this value 9.8 why do I am for uh, why I am for why am I forced to use this value because here we have one significant figure and one decimal places we are forced to do this to have one significant figure so this must be the same number as the uncertainty. Uh, so it must be have one decimal places. So the right answer is this. Okay. Uh, question seven now. Radio wave wavelength. Lambda is incident on a conductor. Graph shows variation with wavelength of the maximum distance D traveled inside the conductor. Uh, if you notice something, guys, here, you know, these questions uh, will not be, will not focus on uh, the experiment itself, but only the skills of dealing with the graph, uh, uncertainties, uh, linearization, uh, 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 error bar, something like this. We are, never, we, are, we are given a data that are plotted like this, D versus lambda, where lambda, uh, uh, it suggested why, or suggest why it's unlikely that the relation between D and lambda is not linear. Okay, guys, now, if I would like, if it's a linear relation, 
I uh, I must be able to draw a best fit line, right? This this best fit line must pass through all the error bars. Let's try. If I try to draw an error bar uh, or a best fit line, no way to draw a best fit line that passes through all error bars. Okay, so this is the reason. Be careful, right? We have to mention that. Able to draw a graph uh, or best fit, sorry, um, a straight line. of best fit that can pass through all the error bars this is what we focus on okay be careful you have to mention this in order to have a, a linear relation the best fit must be a straight line and this is what I must pass through all error bars, okay? Okay, guys. Now, uh, in part B, we are given for this lambda, we have to find the fractional uncertainty in uh, D. It's easy. Now, uh, lambda 2.5, I think. Uh, sorry, lambda 5. This is 5. Yeah, 5 times 10 to the power 5 in around 0.5, right? This is, be careful, this is what? To, to, to match the scale, 0 0.5 times 10 to the power 6, because our scale multiplied by 10 to the power 6, so it's 0 0.5. This is 0 0.5. Okay. Now, as what we mentioned before in the previous time, this is the uncertainty here and here. So it's one box and half. Each box here um, is 0 0.4, right? Each box here is 0 0.4. So this, this is box and half. So 0 0.4. Five. So the uncertainty here, uh, sorry, 0 0.04, sorry, 0. Point, each box is 0 0.04, so the absolute uncertainty is 0 0.05. Okay, so here, um, if I want to find the fractional uncertainty in D, 0 0.05 over, this is the absolute. Uh, over uh, 0. Point, um, is 0. 0.36 the value for D at this position is uh, 0. 0.36 okay so it's 0. 0.36 times 100 percent just to remind you uh, uh, without 100 percent sorry because this is a fraction and not percent not uh, percentage uncertainty Fractional uncertainty is equivalent to the absolute uncertainty over measured value. Okay. The second part here we are asked about uh, finding the uh, uncertainty in d squared, right? In uh, d uh, squared. I got the uncertainty in d 
or the fractional uncertainty in D, which is uh, 14. And if you remember, in D squared, right, the uh, uncertainty must be double this for D squared, right? Because we have to multiply it by 2. We have to multiply the uh, fractional uncertainty by the power. As what I will do now in the calculation. Delta D over D times 100% equals 14, if you remember. So uncertainty in D squared is 2 delta D over D times 100%, which is equivalent to 28%. Now, um, we are given, uh, uh, using this graph, we're asked about um, finding the SI uh, fundamental units for A and B. I will write the equation first of all, D square equals A plus B lambda. The A given as 0.40 times 10 to the power minus 4 will be is given as 1.8 times 10 to the power negative. Now we'll ask about the SI base units for A and B. Look now what I will do. I will use the concept of homogeneous, homogeneity of equations. This equation must be homogeneous. So each term in this equation uh, must have the same SI base unit or SI fundamental units. The unit for D squared must be equivalent to the unit for A squared plus b lambda right now the si unit for d square is m squared equal we don't know what is the si base unit for a but for lambda we know it as m now all these terms must have same SI base units. All of them must have the same SI base unit, which is meter squared. So in order to have uh, the second term, meter squared, A must be meter squared. In order to have meter squared in the third term, B must be meter, so meters times meter, we will have a meter squared. In this question, guys, we have to okay, find guys. Uh, the uh, distance now, when the wavelength um, when the frequency is highest. Is so the, string about uh, the wavelength should axis. be shortest. This is from previous knowledge. Uh, For constant PNP, speed, uh, both uh, uh, frequency and wavelength are inversely uh, proportional. Uh, so what I have to do in this graph, I have to uh, extend the line until it intercepts the y axis. Like so at uh, the interception of y axis, one more. the wavelength tends to be zero. To a graph, would be the, the line that best fit for the data. So uh, um, the y intercept the is d squared. That, uh, which is when we are asked about to, uh, zero the, point the best zero fit for centimeter uh, square. The line of best fit. Some students may think that this line must be a straight line, right? No, I need it d. depends on. Um, uh, so I have to take a square Here root of both sides. It's very obvious that the shape of the graph is what 